پہلی دفعہ سن کو اور بھگوان کو پرنام کریں گے تین دفعہ
sit for for a half an hour meditation and then afterwards if there are any questions or anything you would like to bring up for Dhamma Sakacha, then welcome. And um, otherwise I'll just say a few words and then we end by spreading loving kindness and sharing merit and, uh, and go, go to, uh, to, to have a rest. But now let's meditate half an hour sitting upright, focusing on the breathing, letting the breathing happen naturally, being in the present moment, forgetting any duties for this very sacred 30 minutes dedicate ourselves to the presence of mindfulness and to the dedication of effort, keeping up with the breathing and letting go of the burdens of all the things that we may have carried along here. We just put them down and rest in the presence of the Buddha, who is the one who knows, the faculty of knowing the wise human being that all of us respect as a foremost teacher and somebody who has dropped all the burdens and has become free from suffering. So we recollect this when we meditate, use the breathing as a rhythm of, of our presence, breathing, breathing in, we use the first syllable of the name of the Lord Buddha, Bud, and then breathing out, we mark it in our minds with thinking Ho, Bud, Ho. This is a way of keeping oneself grounded in the awareness of the breathing and we can all observe like, the very, very refined aspects of the breath when we don't fall prone to the hindrances and try to awaken to the presence of the breathing while we inwardly recite the name of the Buddha as a reminder the Buddha was the awakened one and I'm saying this also to myself because after a long journey I'm also tired but I'm trying to recollect the Buddha to be present with all his awakening um, qualities also recollecting that this area, of course for you it's very normal, but for somebody coming from Thailand it's very special to imagine that the Buddha has been walking through this country, possibly been passing through the exact spot where we're sitting, so this should be enough to wake us up and try to be present in our meditation. Now. So I offer that as a little introduction and now we focus on so like go inwards, letting go of all the external uh, trouble that we may have gone through, being happy in the present moment.
started the evening with recollecting the virtues of Buddha Dhamma Sangha and then we went quiet, grounding ourselves in mindfulness of the breathing of the present moment and now we make the tradition tra transition to be back with open eyes and uh, a mind that's receptive and um, I think maybe I say a few words as an introduction to the occasion that we are fortunate to be in. So, as, as you know, Lung Po Liam, uh, the abbot of Wat Pa Po, he uh, was intending to come to the last gathering here in Yamuna Naga and Adi Badri, Kadga, and all the surrounding areas that we visited, and also Lady Damarama. But unfortunately, he caught COVID and couldn't fly. And out of some very good idea, the group, Aranya Vihara Trust, simply moved the ticket. And uh, so that's why we're here today. <laughs> using the, the ticket that wasn't possible to be used in May. So I'm glad and, uh, that we have the opportunity also Dr. Chan Li. He's a frequent visitor. <laughs> yeah, like, um, last time he mentioned that he has come actually more than most, most of um, the Ajans to visit our group and yeah he's also very very happy to join again and then uh, then obviously we also have a presence continually these days in Delhi with Venerable uh, Mahapanyo sitting behind me and and then we have a presence of Venerable Thakku Udom Potimite Narong uh, from Wat Thai Buddha Gaya, Bodh Gaya. Yeah. He's joined on the uh, invitation, and the, the opportunity to come here, and I'm so very happy because so many times we associate as Buddhist pilgrims of going to India go to Bodh Gaya and it's always very beautiful how we're received there in the various monasteries, very generous reception for our groups coming through and uh, so I'm quite happy that we have like, him here as a guest today and then we have Ajahn O or um, his and all body, two body, two body, two body, Chaya, Venerable Ratanavano. He's also um, attended Lopo Chandi many, many occasions coming along um, on the, on the <coughs> pilgrimages to India. And um, actually, Ajahn Chandi has gone to many, many places in India. Like this morning, we're talking about a place close to Mumbai uh, with caves and, uh, that he has visited, and then uh, close to Bangalore, <laughs> he has it's like a very, very keen interest in discovering the ancient Buddhist heritage of India. And then in the second row, in the back, you see Venerable Maha Arun from Wat Manana Chan, Wat Nong Papong, is coming along with Long Poliam, who is scheduled to go already as what we call the Upatak, the attendant. Like Venerable Ananda had the privilege to Upatak 
the Lord Buddha for more than 25 years, and many of us feel in our own way very fortunate to contact our teachers. So Venerable Maha Arun is presently in Wat Pong and um, is doing the duties of looking after Long Ha with everything from the medicines to foot massage and um, or the uh, travel arrangements to putting down the sitting cloth which is part of our our duties as a junior monk even though Venerable Maha Arun is turning to become a Tara, an elder, in two weeks time. <laughs> time flies. So Venerable Maha Arun comes from Laos and it's also very ancient Buddhist culture. And as you know, Ubon Rachatani where Lopa Cha used to live and where Wat Mana Cha and Wat Nongpa Pong is situated is actually geographically a stone throw away from Laos, just over the Mekong River. And culturally, I would say Ubon Rachatani is much closer to Laos than to Central Thai, as they speak the same language and um, have had the same Buddhist tradition as well, in, in many ways. So this is just um, introducing our group and maybe saying a few words on Lompo's little um, comments. I was afraid that Lompo would think, hmm, this trip to Yamuna Naga Adibadri, it's raining, the road is full of cars and people, potholes, and it takes a long time to come here. But this was my thinking. Lumpur was very happy, actually. <laughs> yes, I would say fascinated. And, uh, and he straight away, just like basically, he likes coming here and he likes to support our endeavor and to start a monastery here and not the slightest sense of being critical about anything that I would bring up with my critical mind saying, well, it's good that we see it also in the rainy season, he says, it's just nature. <laughs> <laughs> so those that know the teaching style of our forest tradition quite a little bit already, it's, this, this is very important to see all the good and, and not so good things as natural, natural occurrences. And Lopo was um, praising the agricultural things, like I mean, uh, the crops that he saw on the fields with his expertise as a farmer's boy from Northeast Thailand, basically, he straight away admired the, the rice and the, um, and the lushness of the green areas. Yeah, like agricultural farmland in Haryana here. And um, I said, I think this is where the famous first Marty rice comes from. And he said, I know. He's <laughs> <laughs> trying to describe the rice. <laughs> so in Thailand they eat sticky rice, and here they, we eat the longish rice that doesn't stick so much. It kind of really kind of like doesn't, doesn't stick at all. So it's the opposite, the opposite side of the rice spectrum. But one family. <laughs> so. So this afternoon already, like when we had the meal, like uh, Lopo gave a few little little pointers of Dhamma to one or two um, guests that came and already had to leave again, and also uh, appreciate that um, and appreciated that people have come a long way to join an event like this. Some some people really coming from, from with with the airplane, just like we came from Thailand flying in from other parts of India and being here only for a short time and also in a quite a say, say amount of like a time and financial effort to be able to come this period is quite a, quite a fortunate opportunity and we value that and so Lopo said a few things about um, the um, insecurity one one woman was asking, one practitioner was asking about the um, training oneself over years to see things as they are 
which is one of the Dhamma phrases that we can easily use but very not so easily realize. So she said the frustration is that um, it feels like every now and again one gets thrown into the vast ocean without yet being able to swim. And um, one knows, yeah, the ocean is deep and it's dangerous and so forth. But like, how can I, how can I get on without really knowing how to swim? And Lumpur's advice on this kind of like feeling of being, say, under pressure by all the dukkha that one sees in samsara, the dukkha that one sees in society. He said. It's very important to be able to see things with the right angle and be able to relax into seeing them in this way. And then practice to relax when one looks at things. So seeing things as they are, not only seeing them as they are, but seeing them in a relaxed way as they are. Which of course is something that we're working on all of us trying to see things they are in the way they are, just simply nature in a relaxed way, not in a tense way, not in a way of worries. So Lumpur was saying, like, the, the worrying doesn't really help and um, it brings us into a, a state of mind of, um, of pressure and, and stress. So to then be able to use mindfulness and wisdom, which are human capacities that are actually really special. Long Paul many times uses the uh, expression of like, the human potential. So we're, we're human animals, like we're basically, um, we've got an animal nature with instincts and fear and uh, worries, and uh, we've got an intellect that tries to solve problems and so forth. But the real human potential is like, potential to have mindfulness and wisdom and that innate quality and that recollection. Let me look at this with wisdom, let me look at this mindfully, clearly and with a relaxed attitude. That maybe helps us to find ways to swim. So this is a very short little thing that Nongha advised and, and I think was quite, quite good to to keep the Dhamma brief in, in this opportunity because if we start arguing about what is Dukkha and how, where is it and how does it come to be and more or less kind of a bit bargaining, yes, and it is really Dukkha and then basically we're digging in our heels deeper whereas to have that little sense of lightness and saying, yeah, it's Dukkha and <laughs> being able just to take it in that way I think when we see that um, expressed, then it can go a long way. It's much more uh, of an icon for ourselves to, to keep that in mind than a perfect explanation. And this is many ways the approach in our tradition is to keep things a bit down to earth and um, not too, say, up in the head and being able to then sharpen our awareness for the things that are small, little pointers of Dhamma or little insights that we develop through our good qualities of mindfulness and wisdom on the wayside. And I'm sure sooner or later we'll be able to swim with that bit of mindfulness and wisdom that we all have and uh, try to cultivate it and emulate the, those qualities wherever we, we can sense them and not be under pressure and the approach of using meditation as a pressure cooker to force oneself to say be disciplined and keen on progress and, and uh, trying to see results as we all know is one of the main obstacles in meditation and if we can actually really remember this idea of innate quality that like, there is actually already a sense of relaxation, a sense of peace in, in our hearts, otherwise we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be out there on the streets doing silly things. And we're sitting here and trying to kind of tune into the good qualities that we have. And if we just re recollect that task in many ways, I think we can gradually 
be more at ease with all the suffering around us. So this is maybe a short, short little introduction. And um, I'm sure there's maybe some some ideas that you'd like to express or, or ask. We can uh, kind of keep it keep it brief as well, but if there's anything you can work on. To, to ask or say, say something. No? Or maybe have better one up and you translate first. He's already scribbled a whole notebook full of Hindi notes. So pass on. No? Kogan Ajahn, seek your permission to translate your words on the Dhamma. And Ajahn, if you may permit, I might also just share this permission I just took from you because sometimes it's not very clear some of these um, uh, processes that, that we have. So, I have started before Ajahn to ask Ajahn to translate his words to his words. And in Vinay, there is a prayer that we अगर धर्म के बारे में कुछ बोलते हैं तो उसको केवल या तो किसी के स्पष्ट निवेदन पे बोलते हैं या परमिशन के बाद बोलते हैं सो so, ये एक और इसको हम जो मैंने शब्द यूज किए वो थाई भाषा में खोर ओ का बोलते हैं तो उसको एक, एक तरीके से वो परमिशन मांगने की प्रक्रिया है तो आप लोग कई बार नोटिस करेंगे कि जो जूनियर मंक होता है वो सीनियर से इस तरह से निवेदन करता है कुछ भी कहने से या करने से पहले अजान केवली का जो नाम है हम लोग बार बार ये अजान शब्द यूज करते हैं और कई हम में से कई लोग जानते हैं कि ये जो हिंदी संस्कृत या पाली का शब्द आचार्य है उसी का एक थाई वर्जन है तो मैं कई बार अपनी ट्रांसलेशंस में आचार्य जी रेफर करता हूँ तो हमारा जो कॉन्टेक्स्ट है उसमें वो और आसानी से समझ आता है लेकिन जब हम अजान अजान कहते हैं वो एक्चुअली इतना मुश्किल नहीं है उसको समझना कई बार हमें लगता है कोई अजीब शब्द हम यूज कर रहे हैं सो जो नए लोग हैं उनकी क्लैरिटी के लिए कि जो अजान शब्द है वो हमारे आचार्य शब्द का ही एक थाई वर्जन है तो शुरू में आचार्य जी ने एक इंट्रोडक्शन दिया हम सब जो यहाँ आए हैं और खासकर के लोगों को लेम जो हम सब के ऊपर जाए हैं उन्हीं के माध्यम से लोगों को लेम के माध्यम से ही हम सब का जो यहाँ पे हम इंशु बैठे हैं हम सब की उपसंपदा उन्होंने ही की थी तो हम सब उनको अपना आदरणीय आचार्य आदरणीय ऊपर जाए मानते हैं और अजान केवली ने बताया कि पिछली बार जब यहाँ मई में हम लोग सब आए थे तब तभी से लुम्पुर लियम का प्लान था वो खुद आने वाले थे उस समय और आने से कुछ ही दिन पहले वो कोविड पॉजिटिव पाए गए इसलिए वो नहीं आ पाए थे तो जो यहाँ का होस्ट है जो आरएनए विहार ट्रस्ट है उन्होंने लुम्पुर की जो टिकट थी उसको आगे बढ़ा दिया तो उस वजह से उस कारण से हम अब यहाँ आ पाए हैं क्योंकि पिछली बार का जो लुम्पुर का प्रोग्राम था वो नहीं हो पाया था लुम्पुर लियम के साथ साथ जो दूसरे सीनियर हमारे मंग हैं अजन जंदी वो असल में भारत बहुत बार आ चुके हैं और आर एन ट्रस्ट के ही इनविटेशन पे शायद तीसरी बार हम आ रहे हैं लेकिन इसके अलावा भी वो भारत कई बार आए हैं और उनका भारत में बहुत उनकी बहुत रुचि है वो बता रहे थे कि अजन जंदी जो हैं वो कई अलग अलग जगहों पे भी गए हैं जो मुख्य बुद्धिस्ट तीर्थ हैं उसके अलावा भी जैसे कि एक परिवार बॉम्बे से आया था तो उनसे वो बात कर रहे थे कि बॉम्बे के पास कुछ गुफाएं हैं वहाँ भी वो गए हैं बेंगलोर के पास गए हैं तो अजन जंदी काफ़ी जगहों पर भारत में ट्रैवल किया है और अजन जंदी के बाद जो सीनियर मंक हैं वो वाक थाई बोध गया से आए हैं और वहाँ के जो एक पूरा महकमा है वहाँ पर जो जो पिलग्रिम्स आते हैं खास करके थाईलैंड से खास करके जो मोनेस्टिक पिलग्रिम्स आते हैं उनकी देखभाल के लिए तो 
वहाँ से ये वेनरेबल हमारे बीच आए हैं इसके बाद अजन ओ है अजन ओ का जो पाली नाम है वो है वेनरेबल रत्न वनो तो थाई कल्चर में एक ये प्रथा है अजन सॉरी आई एम एक्चुअली जस्ट एक्सप्लेनिंग हाउ ओ कम्स अबाउट फ्रॉम फ्रॉम रत्न वनो तो ये प्रथा है कि जो पाली नाम होता है वो एक तरीके से हम फॉर्मल नाम होता है लेकिन जो बचपन से उनके निकनेम्स चलते आ रहे हैं राजू पप्पू बंटी वो चलते रहते हैं तो अजय ओ जो है वो उनका एक्चुअली निकनेम है इसी तरीके से तो कई बार कई लोग पूछ रहे थे कि ये ये कैसा नाम है कौन है ये निकनेम और अजन चाह जो है चाह भी इसी तरीके से एक्चुअली निक नेम है उनका जो पाली नाम है वो तो सुबद्धो था और जो लुम्पुर लियम है लियम इसी तरीके से उनका निक नेम है जो बचपन से पढ़ गया था तो वो चलता आ रहा है उनका पाली नाम थित धम्म है तो इस तरह से आप देखेंगे कि जो हम जो थाई ट्रेडिशन है इसमें इस तरह से निक कई बार चलते हैं सो हम लोगों के लिए कई बार काफ़ी स्टीरियस होता है सो सो अजन ओ अजन जंदी के उपठक हैं कई सालों से उनकी ज़रूरतों की देखभाल करते हैं अपने मॉनेस्ट्री में और हमारे यहाँ एक प्रथा है अजन के ने छोटा सा उपठकिंग पे एक हमें इंट्रोडक्शन दिया तो एक प्रथा ये है कि जो सीनियर मंक होता है उसका एक एक तरीके से आप कहें कि सहायक होता है एक असिस्टेंट होता है जो उसकी सब चीज़ों का ध्यान रखता है आपने देखा होगा कि जब सीनियर्स बैठते हैं उससे पहले हम जो जूनियर्स होते हैं हम लोग उनके ये जो आसन है वो बिछाते हैं और जैसे लुम्पुर लियम जैसे जो सीनियर मंक्स होते हैं आ, उनकी आ, मालिश करना खास करके पैरों को आ, मसाज करना उनकी जो और कई सारी ज़रूरतें होती हैं दवाइयों का देखभाल करना तो इस तरीके से एक हम इसको अपना ट्रेनिंग का तरीका मानते हैं एक तरह से अपना सौभाग्य मानते हैं कि जो हमारे टीचर्स हैं उनकी हम देखभाल कर पाते इसी तरीके से अजन वो जो है वो कई सालों से अजन जंदी के उपाधक हैं वो भी भारत अब बहुत बार आ चुके हैं मैं खुद उनसे बहुत परिचित हो गया हूँ आप लोग आप लोग आप लोगों में से कई लोगों ने इनको कई बार देखा होगा और इसके बाद हैं मेरे मेरे राइट पर वनरेबल महाअरुण तो अरुण वही नाम है जो हिंदी में प्रचलित है सूर्य का उदय होना और आप देखेंगे कि थाई भाषा में ऐसे कई शब्द हैं कई नाम हैं जो कि संस्कृत या पाली से निकल के आए हैं तो हमारे लिए बहुत नॉर्मल है अरुण मुझे लोग पूछते थे अच्छा ये इंडियन मंक है क्या आई यूज टू बी आस्ट इफ अरुण इज एन इंडियन मंक वैन दे ओनली सॉ द नेम ऑफ द पेपर बिफोर दिस सॉन्ग इन सो इट्स अ वेरी कॉमन नेम इन इंडिया तो और इनके नाम और उनके आगे महा लगा हुआ है थाईलैंड में एक एक पदवी है एक डिग्री है एक तरीके से जो, जो पाली भाषा में बहुत उत्तीन है उनको ये महा का टाइटल दिया जाता है तो वनरेबल अरुण ने पाली की बहुत एक्सटेंसिव पढ़ाई की हुई है नाइन नौ स्टेज होते हैं उसमें से थ्री थ्री स्टेज अजन यू यू डन सिक्स सिक्स छः स्टेज के होंगे सभी तो बहुत उनको एक स्कॉलरली तरीके से बहुत पहुंचा हुआ हम समझते हैं हम मानते हैं और वो हमारे वनपा नाना चाँद के मंक हैं वो ओरिजिनली लाओ से हैं और पिछले तीन सालों से लाओ से फिर यहाँ आए और हमारे साथ रह रहे हैं वनपा नाना चाँद में पिछले करीब डेढ़ साल से वनरेबल और लियम के पाठक हैं और अब वटपा पॉन में रहते हैं तो उनका इंट्रोडक्शन भजन के भी ने दिया और ये अब दस वर्ष रोम्स में कंप्लीट करेंगे थेरा होने वाले हैं ये इनका दसवां वास चल रहा है तो हम अपनी सामान्य तरीके से जो दस वास के हो जाते हैं उनको हम फिर अजान कह के पुकारते हैं तो अब इनको अजान अरुण कहना बिल्कुल उचित है इस समय से और जो इनका इंट्रोडक्शन दिया फिर अजन केवली ने क्योंकि वनरेबल अरुण लाओ से हैं तो फिर उन्होंने इससे जुड़ी हुई बात बताई कि जो जहाँ हमारी मोनेस्ट्री है वो राजस्थानी जो जो जगह है वो एक्चुअली लाओ से बहुत करीब है बिल्कुल लाओस की सीमा पर है तो वन राजस्थानी और लाओस के विषय केवल बी नदी है और उसके बाद फिर लाओस शुरू हो जाता है 
تو ہمارے جو سارا علاقہ ہے جہاں ہماری مونیسٹریز ہیں جہاں سے اجان چاہتے ہیں ان کو لیے ہیں وہ سنسکرتک روپ سے اور بھاشا کے طریقے سے کھان پان رہن سہن وہ لاؤس سے زیادہ ملتا ہے بجائے اس کے کی سینٹرل تھائی لینڈ کے جو مکھ تھائی کلچر ہے اس سے ہم کافی الگ ہیں نارتھ ہیس تھائی لینڈ میں خاص کر کے اوبان میں تو اس کے بارے میں اجن کے ویلی نے تھوڑا سا ہمیں بتایا پھر اجان نے ہمیں آج صبح جو لمپر لیم سے ان کی بات چیت ہو رہی تھی اس کے بارے میں کہہ رہے تھے اجان کے ویلی کو لگ رہا تھا کچھ ان کو گھبراہت ہو رہی تھی کہ آج کا دن کافی لمبا دن رہا اور تھوڑا گلومی سا رہا تھا لمبی ڈرائیو تھی کئی بار ہسے ہوئے تھے ہم تو ان کو لگ رہا تھا پتا نہیں لمپر لیم کا کیسا مل بن رہا ہوگا پر انہوں نے بتایا جب انہوں نے ان سے بات کی لمپر لیم سے تو لمپر لیم بہت ہی فیسنیٹڈ تھی مجھے فیسنیٹڈ کا ہندی شب نہیں مل رہا تھا میں نے کافی ڈھونے کی کوشش کی تو میں اسی کو استعمال کر رہا ہوں اور لمپر کی ایک یہ ایک بہت ہی کرونا کے چت والی بات ہے کہ وہ بہت چاہتے ہیں کہ اس طریقے سے جہاں گروپ سے کٹے ہو رہے ہیں لوگ کٹے ہو رہے ہیں دھرم سمجھنے کے لئے دھرم سیکھنے کے لئے ان کا سپورٹ کریں تو جیسے یہاں آئے ہیں اور کافی بزرگ ہیں لمپور کی صحت بھی اب بہت اتنی اچھی نہیں رہی ہے لیکن اس کے باوجود ان میں بہت انتوزیازم ہے ہم سب کو ہم سب کی ساہتہ کرنے کا اور اچھان کیفی نے بتایا کہ ان کے من میں بہت یہ کرٹیکل بچار آ رہے تھے ان کو لگ رہا تھا کہ اگر میں یہ سوچ رہا تھا میں سوچ رہا ہوں تارے پتہ نہیں کیا ہو رہا ہے کہاں آگئے یہاں مونیسٹری کیسے بنے گی اتنا مشکل اتنا دور ہے دلی سے اتنی بارش ہو رہی ہے سڑکیں ٹھیک نہیں ہیں وہیکلز پاسے ہوں میں اُلٹی دشاہ میں سے وہیکلز آ رہے ہیں تو کہہ رہے تھے اگر میں ہوتا تو میں اس طرح سے سوچ رہا ہوتا I was just sharing with them your what you said about how you would have thought versus how Lumpur thought اور وہ کہہ رہے ہیں جب میں Lumpur لیم سے ملا تو Lumpur نے صرف اتنا کہا کہ ہاں یہ تو بلکل پرکرتی کے انصار ہے پرکرتی کی چیزیں ہیں اسی طرح سے ہیں تو اجان کے افیل نے کہا کہ بہت ایک کانٹرانس تھا کہ میں کس طرح سے سوچ رہا تھا اور لمپور نے اس کو کس طرح سے دیکھا آج کا سارا دن تو بہت اچھے موڈ میں تھے اور کافی ریلیکس تھے کئی الگ الگ باتوں پر لمپور نے جان کے بلی سے بات کی دوپہر میں ایک تو یہ ساری جو ہماری یاترہ تھی اس میں انہوں نے جو جو کرشی ہو رہی تھی جو گروپس اوگ رہے تھے اس کے بارے میں کافی کمنٹری کر رہے تھے لمپور اور جان کے بلی نے بتایا کہ لمپور لیم خود ایک فارمنگ پریوار سے ہیں انہوں نے خود کئی سال اپنے ہاتھوں سے اپنے کھیت جوتے ہیں اور وہاں چاول کی کھیتی ہوتی ہے ایک خاص طرح کا چاول ہوتا ہے وہاں پر اس کی کھیتی خود کی ہوئی ہے تو ان کا ایک بہت ایک ریلیشنشپ اور کنیکشن ہے اس طرح سے جب وہ گرشی دیکھتے ہیں تو تو لمپور آجان کے بلی کو بتا رہے تھے کہ دھان کی کھیتی اپرنٹلی بہت اچھی ہے یہاں پر اور اجان کے امیل نے کہا میں نے تھوڑی ہوشیاری کرنے کی کوشش کی میں نے کو بتایا ہے لمپور یہ پاسمتی چاول ہے لمپور کہتے ہیں ہاں ہاں مجھے پتا ہے تو یہ پرکرن اجان کے امیل نے بتایا جو ان کی آج دوپہر میں لمپور سے بات ہوئی پھر انہوں نے بتایا اس دوپہر میں جب ہم نے بھوجن کے بعد کچھ ویقتگت کچھ لوگوں سے لمپور کا چھوٹا سا دھر پہ آدار پردان ہوا اور اس میں جو کچھ دھم کے بندوں نکلے اس کو اجان کے بھی سمرائز کر رہے ہیں آج شام کی جو ہماری یہ سبھا ہے اس میں کچھ ہمارے پاس بیس ہو کچھ پوائنٹس ہو اس کے وجہ اس کے لئے انہوں نے ان پوائنٹس کو سمرائز کیا جو آج صبح لنپور نے جن لوگوں کی ان سے ملاقات ہے ان کو بتایا تو ایک بات جو لنپور نے بہت اپریشیٹ کی کہ کئی لوگ آپ میں سے بہت دور دور سے آئے ہیں کافی اپنا سمیں نکال کے کافی خرچ کر کے کافی سمیں کا خرچہ کر کے پیسوں کا خرچہ کر کے تو لمپور اس کو بہت اس بات کے بہت اس کو اپریشیٹ کر رہے تھے پھر ایک سوار اٹھا تھا انسیکیورٹی کے آس پاس کے لیے نے اٹھایا تھا اوپاس کاروں سے تو لمپور کا کہنا یہ تھا کہ ہم کوشش کریں جب ایسے کچھ بھی مشکل منوستیتیاں بنتی ہیں من کے بھاو جب اس طرح سے اکوشل من کے بھاو بنتے ہیں تو کوشش ہم اس طرح سے کریں کہ جس طرح سے چیزیں ہیں ان کو بس کے وقت اسی طریقے سے دیکھا جائے اس کے آگے کچھ اس کے اوپر کچھ لیب لگانے کا جو ہماری عادت ہے اس سے ہم کوشش کریں بچنے کی تو ایک اور جن کے ملی نے رائٹ اینگل کی بات کی کہ چیزوں کو ہم 
जो उनको देखने का उचित नज़रिया है दुरुस्त नज़रिया है सही नज़रिया है उससे देखने की कोशिश करें और जो उसमें तीसरा आयाम था वो ये था कि एक एक सहज मन से हम कोशिश करें अप्रोच करने का जीवन की जो भी स्थितियाँ हैं रिलैक्स्ड शब्द अजान के लिए यूज़ कर रहे थे तो एक एक सहज मन की उन्होंने बात की और साथ साथ वो बता रहे थे कि लोगों ने ये भी सलाह दी ये भी एडवाइस दी कि बहुत ज़्यादा चिंता करने से बहुत ज़्यादा अपने ऊपर प्रेशर बनाने से कोई बहुत लाभ नहीं होता है और जो सती और पन्या के जो टूल्स हैं हमारे पास जो कि हमें जो मनुष्य योनि है उसको पशु योनि से अलग बनाते हैं क्योंकि हमारी कई सारी जो प्रवृत्तियां हैं वो तो वही हैं जो पशुओं की हैं लेकिन जो सती और पन्या की जो क्वालिटीज़ हैं वो हमें पशुओं से अलग बनाती हैं तो इसलिए अगर हम कोशिश करें कि एक जितने भी जितना भी चित्त हम जितना भी मन हमारा स्थिर हो सके उस स्थिरता से चीज़ों को जितनी भी समझ है उसके माध्यम से हम देखने की कोशिश करें उन्होंने एक आखिरी पॉइंट ये कहा कि हमारी जो ट्रेडिशन है उसमें हम जो हमारी परंपरा है उसमें हम जो धर्म का उल्लेख है धर्म को समझने का हमारा तरीका है वो काफ़ी सहज है काफ़ी सिंपल है उसको हम बहुत ज़्यादा डिटेल और बहुत ज़्यादा कॉम्प्लिकेट नहीं करते हैं तो ये एक समरी थी जो अजन के बिल ने कही Yet he's just arrived and he's just um, feeling it out, and, uh, and, and he says, "No worries yet." <laughs> so, um, so, is there anything that you'd like to kind of bring up or ask, or shall I just keep talking? <laughs> Opportunities to do question and answers, and um, it's also like in a long day for for yourself. But maybe one thing I can mention for myself again: um, when we did our chanting this evening, I was delighted to hear so much sound. <laughs> it's uh, it's been we've come a long way as as our, in our group. From uh, being a bit skeptical about um, yeah, communal chanting, and um, to this evening, even chanting by heart, it's very very nice. And uh, can I explain a little bit about um, what the chanting means to myself? And because, as you know, we're Buddhists. We're not believing in rites and rituals. We're not believing that these words have an innate. Power in themselves. Maybe they do a little bit, just like music or, or whatever, like um, all kinds of like arts and uh, things like sounds and sights. Of course, they have a certain power. Uh, you can feel differently looking at a chandelier and or looking at a traffic jam. Does feel different. Right? So, they, they like they uh, the chant does create a certain, um, say, atmosphere, but. What it means for everyone in our practice is a practice um, using the chanting as a recollection, a recollection kind of flavored with good harmonious feelings, and the mixture. How much we say open up to the feeling level while chanting, and how much we open up to the panya or wisdom level while chanting. Is maybe up to each and every one, but I would say we're well in the plus 
of doing this with a bit of devotion and a special dedication, energy, but not throwing away our mindfulness and wisdom while doing it. Because I believe that you as native Hindi speakers with lots of Sanskrit Pali background, you'll be able to make sense of these things almost straight away. Also knowing the Buddha's teachings and knowing the translation because in Hindi Dhammarama you chant with Hindi translations. And similarly do we chant with English translations in Wat Banana chant or in uh, Wat Banana we chant with Thai translations. So we work on on both ends that let's say more or less like a meaning of things and the feeling of things. And I would say it's a safe bet because if we don't feel that energy of faith, and that energy of like this is meritorious, this is punya, this is like beautiful, this is harmonious, then sometimes we can feel like we're thrown into the vast ocean of samsara without being able to swim. But if we see like if there's some good energy as well, then it helps us to say, yeah, we all have the potential to, to do these things. And myself, like being say, kind of from fairly rational background, like a German Protestant upbringing, basically we analyze things. We just take the meaning and no kind of extra dolphins and crystals and things like that, basically <laughs> dry insight. And I believe many of you have been disciples of Goekachi before, which is also stressing like more the, the uh, I would say, reasonable parts of the practices and the technical parts. So I, I think we're not prone to get carried away by believing that simply uttering the words will bring salvation to us. This wasn't the Buddha's teachings. It's a, it's a trigger for insight and it's a reminder for mindfulness. For example, if you start <coughs> chanting automatically, you forget whether you're with Buddha, Dhamma or Sangha, basically, then maybe a little note, hmm, got to be mindful while I'm chanting. And I also have to mean it when I'm chanting. I can't just do it like a, say, um, say train rolling, 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 <laughs> getting carried away into some area which we don't know. So similar when we meditate, when we lose the mindfulness of the breathing, and we suddenly are all over the world, all over the place, and we just simply go back to a simple recollection. Okay, start again. Um, in the present, we're always allowed to do that. Similarly, in the chanting, if you um, get particularly inspired by a certain um, phrase in the chanting, which I have my favorite ones, which I won't share now, but like uh, I believe that over time we develop a certain, say, relationship to these words and we enrich them by our own experience and we pack it into this little formulas. It can be very short, just similar to short teachings that we, we, we receive. They come at the right time and they're charged with mindfulness and wisdom and and uh, say a sense of personal say experience in them, then they can go a very long way. So sometimes we might get even carried away by certain say very beautiful aspects of the words of the Buddha which we are reciting, and suddenly forget where we are in the chanting and start crumbling and stum stumbling and then reset and just back to the present and catch up with what the others are chanting. So that's okay. I, I have like I, I won't go into it, but I have certain chants that actually do mean a lot to me, and I believe they become like good friends. You take them along wherever you go. You don't need an iPad for them because you've got them up here, or maybe even in here. So we can use them. It's like it's a real resource, and um, just to be able to chant the same chants that we chant at Wat Banana Chant in Thailand, to be able to chant them together with all of us here in Yamuna Naga is very meaningful for me and um, it, it sets a good um, auspicious sign for what we want to 
what we're endeavoring to, to create um, coming here t together. And um, that feeling of taking certain, say, forms or um, practices or techniques or rituals and making them meaningful for ourselves and sharing this meaning with each other, I think will will bring great fruits and uh, I think that's a thing to celebrate as well. Like uh, everybody was chanting along, I'm just very happy, great A <laughs> for, <laughs> for, our, for our group. And yeah, so um, the idea of using those chants as a friend in the Dhamma, like it's taken from the Buddha's words. Some of the words are directly the Buddha's words. Some of them are, let's say, poetic renderings of the Buddha's words, which uh, you can easily come up by yourself as well if you translate something into Hindi by yourself or maybe in English or so. You many times realize that the Pali language is very broad and the Buddha apparently worked with this whole idea of having a whole cluster of meanings to simple words like, for example, dukkha or anatta. So they, they are triggers for the whole like, experience of these terms and the wisdom behind them to, to kind of come into our awareness while we're chanting them. And sometimes um, when we try to translate them, we need to narrow them down to a certain say precise modern meaning and I would say good luck like Venerable um, Maharun can tell you a little bit how much suffering it is to really study this and do this in a standardized way and in many ways like in, in our tradition we do this more more casual and our renderings of like what these terms mean that we chant in the, in the Pali language sometimes may not be a hundred percent accurate but as long as we are aware of that, this is working grounds, this is our experimental practice in trying to figure out what it means, like, let's say, rupang anatta. Yeah, if you knew what this meant, maybe you wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> so, so it's something that we're working and, and um, accumulating uh, angles on. And in that sense, if you ever get the chance to translate something into your own language, you can experiment, and it's actually quite fun. Like, uh, with all the, uh, let's say, background that you have being from this culture. But you have to be careful not to mix it up with some of the common um, terminology that maybe is used in present day religions. And the Buddha was still very, very, very precise. And uh, he spent 84,000 um, Dhamma talks in explaining what actually he means. And we, we can actually uh, like draw on these and, and check what we are experiencing with what we read and what we know about the language and the, and the Dhamma in the, in the context of the scriptures. But while we're chanting them, we need to use what we have as an understanding in order to cultivate our, our practice at that moment. Just like when we're thrown into the ocean, you got to find out how to swim at that moment in some way or the other and use whatever mindfulness and wisdom you have in order to make that um, carry you. So this is a bit the approach of our traditions, not to get into the letter of the things, but into the spirit. And the spirit of um, the teachings of the Buddha, I believe, is very much um, accessible to many doors. And we can um, experiment with that and use chants or rituals in order to have grounds for experimenting. What does it really mean and what does it, um, how does it affect us? For example, um, the term Dukkha or the term Anatta or Anicca, like these are really key terms and we experiment with applying the meaning that we presently have developed for our situation, I'm sure it will come to a very round, very dhammic meaning at some point. So that's why we, why we do the chant, and it's work in progress. We're not lip and <laughs> like paying lip service. Yeah? Like we're not paying lip service to anything, basically. We're using it as a reminder for 
or mindfulness and wisdom to be cultivated in our own hearts and being able to feel the meaning on the spot, being put on the spot. It's like somebody um, tells you, um, solve this problem now and, and you've got to come up with an answer. It's just like when you're thrown in the, in the ocean, you have to swim. Somehow, this is many times. If you explain to your fellow um, well, wayfarers or like people that are new in the group or people that actually don't know what the Buddha actually taught and have never read Buddhist um, texts and think the Buddha, Buddha is some kind of godlike creature, you can use the chanting and explain a little bit, but you also need to make that person feel yeah, they get the point, they want to try this out. It's an empowerment to ourselves to have mindfulness and wisdom. Uh, like the Buddha compared the teachings to a raft that you use to uh, go over a river, basically, but you know, carry this raft around and say, here, I'm a raft holder, I'm a raft carrier. So, basically, uh, this is a bit the, the style of the forest tradition to, to uh, use the things in the, in an experimental, uh, experiential, like uh, from experience and in an ex experimental way. So, then, then I'm going to go, uh, Mahapan Yuji translate this one. Okay, Khabar Ajahn. So, uh, uh, Ajahn Kevli ne, jo dousri apne commentary di, us mein khas focus jo kiya, wo jo humari ek, uh, जो चैंटिंग की परंपरा है जो हम पाठ करते हैं उस पर इन्होंने फोकस किया और आप सब को शायद पता ही है कि हम अलग अलग चैंट्स हैं हमारे पास और अब पाली और हिंदी की ये किताब भी बनाई गई है जो कि हमारी जो वाटपा अनाचाद की ओरिजिनल चैंटिंग बुक है जिसमें पाली और इंग्लिश है उसको अडेप्ट किया गया है हमारी ज़रूरतों के हिसाब से तो ये जो अचान ने हमें कॉमेंट्री थी वो हमें इस बात की तरफ हमारा ध्यान आकर्षित करने के लिए कि किस तरीके से हमारे टीचर्स और हम लोगों ने जो पाठ है जो चैंटिंग है उसको भी साधना का एक आयाम बनाया है तो इस पे ये सारा इनका अभी जो इन्होंने हमें छोटा सा वो दिया हुआ था तो मैं थोड़ा सा समराइज़ कर दूँगा इसको जो कि आठ बज चुके हैं तो सबसे पहले तो अजय बहुत प्रसन्न हुए बहुत खुश हुए कि आज इस ग्रुप में जब हम कर रहे थे यहाँ से जब मंक्स कर रहे थे तो साथ ही साथ आप लोगों में से बहुत लोग याद से इस चैंटिंग को साथ साथ कर रहे थे उसी लय में उसी धुन में तो उनको बहुत इस बात की खुशी हुई और वो याद कर रहे थे उस समय पे जब ये शुरू ही किया था तब कितना मुश्किल हुआ करता था हम सबको करना भी और सुन पाना भी उसको तो इसी आज उनको इस बात की बहुत 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 खुशी हुई इस चीज़ की उन्होंने साथ ही साथ ये भी कहा कि ये जो वो देखते हैं कि यहाँ जो हमारी होम मॉनेस्ट्रीज़ हैं उससे इतनी दूर जब यमुना नगर में इसी तरीके से हम शाम को बिल्कुल वही चैंटिंग करते हैं जो कि हम वाट पर पाओं या वाट पर आना चाट में करते हैं तो इससे बहुत इंस्पिरेशन उनको खुद को जगता है बहुत बहुत प्रसन्नता होती है उन्होंने चैंटिंग के हमें फिर इसके बाद दो स्तर बताए जैसे कि वो यूज़ करते हैं जैसे कि वो समझते हैं एक तो जो भाव के स्तर पे आता है फीलिंग के स्तर पे आता है और एक जो समझ के स्तर पे आता है प्रज्ञा के स्तर पे आता है तो जो भावात्मक जो डिवोशनल जो उस श्रेणी की एक यूज़ है चैंटिंग का जो जिस तरह से हम उसको इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं वो वो एक तरीका है और फिर जब हम उसके शब्द समझते हैं उनको ट्रांसलेट करते हैं उनके स्पेसिफिक मतलब में जाते हैं उसको कैसे यूज़ करना है वो उसका एक दूसरा तरीका है अजय ने कहा कि हम हालांकि ये नहीं समझते कि उन शब्दों में अपने आप में कोई जादुई या कोई अलौकिक शक्ति है लेकिन ये भी सही बात है कि शब्द को हम अगर भावनात्मक तरीके से जो फ्रॉम द हार्ट जो हम कहते हैं उस तरीके से हम अप्रोच करें तो उससे कई सारे बेनिफिट्स होते हैं कई सारे जो मन को एक लिफ्ट करने का आयाम है वो उससे फॉर एग्ज़ाम्पल पूरा होता है और साथ ही हम उसको जैसे ही हमारी समझ उसकी बनती है उससे हम कंबाइन करते हैं 
तो ऐसा नहीं है एक ये मैकेनिस्टिक समझ नहीं है वो अपनी अपनी बात बता रहे थे कि मैं एक जर्मन होने के नाते मेरी एक ऐसी प्रवृत्ति है कि हर चीज़ को बिल्कुल रैशनली क्लियरली समझना ज़रूरी है लेकिन वो बताते हैं कि मैं भी मैंने धीरे धीरे ये कल्टिवेट किया है कि जो ये एक फीलिंग एस्पेक्ट है जो ये एक भाव का एस्पेक्ट है जानते हैं जो श्रद्धा का एस्पेक्ट है उसका भी एक रोल वो उसका भी इस्तेमाल करें जो कि अपने आप में पुण्य का एक कारण होता है और साथ ही साथ जो उसके स्पेसिफिक मतलब हैं उसमें भी जाएं किस हद तक वो हमारे मन वो हमारे मन में और हमारी आदतों में उतरे उसकी हम कोशिश करें उन्होंने एक एस्पेक्ट जो और टच किया वो जो हम साधना करते हैं ध्यान करते हैं उसको उन्होंने कोशिश की क्वेट करने की चैटिंग से तो जिस तरीके से जब हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं अपने मन को साधने का एकाग्र करने का और कई बार इधर उधर चला जाता है भटक जाता है तो बताते हैं कि चैटिंग में भी इसी तरीके से जब मुझे शब्द याद हो गए हैं जैसे कि आज शाम की वंदना है हम में से ज़्यादातर लोगों को वो याद है तो जब हम याद से मेमोरी से उसको कर रहे होते हैं तो ये संभावना बनती है कि इसी तरीके से हम शब्द तो बोल रहे हैं चैटिंग तो कर रहे हैं लेकिन मन कहीं और चला गया है तो वो बताते हैं कि ये भी एक तरीका है इस तरीके से कलेक्ट करने का मन को साधने का चैटिंग का तो एक तो उन्होंने ये जो भाव का भाव की बात की उसके मतलब की बात की और फिर उसका यूज़ हम मन को साधने में करें उसकी उन्होंने बात की मैं थोड़ा समराइज कर रहा हूँ ताकि हम हमें इतना समय ना लगे फिर उन्होंने ये बात बताई कि हम इस तरीके से पाठ जो है है उसको अपने एक धर्म मित्र की तरह यूज़ कर सकते हैं हम ये समझते हैं कि ये जो है वो भगवान बुद्ध के असली वचन हैं असली शब्द हैं और साथ ही साथ कुछ चैंट हमारी ऐसी हैं जिन जो कि जो कि पोइटिक रेंडरिंग्स हैं मुझे उसका एग्जैक्ट हिंदी अभी नहीं मिल रहा है जो कि लोगों ने अलग अलग भिक्षुओं ने या और भी लोगों ने आपने अपने अपने एक भाव के हिसाब से उनको इन चैंट्स में डाला है फिर उन्होंने थोड़ा ये भी बताया कि हालांकि हमें वर्ड्स को इस तरीके से उन शब्दों को हम ऐसे यूज़ करें जो कि हमें मदद देते हैं जिससे हमारा मन लिफ्ट हो लेकिन हम ये भी ध्यान रखें कि उसको हम बहुत ज़्यादा जो हम इंग्लिश में कहते हैं ना उसको बहुत ज़्यादा डम डाउन ना कर दें उसको बहुत ज़्यादा सामान्य ना कर दें और फिर जो जो प्रचलित कॉन्सेप्ट चल रहे हैं उनसे उसको मिक्स कर दें और हमें ऐसे एक भाव आ जाए कि हाँ सब एक ही है सब ये सारी चीज़ें एक ही हैं तो ऐसा नहीं है भगवान बुद्ध की जो शिक्षा है जो टीचिंग है बहुत स्पष्ट है बहुत स्पेसिफिक है और उसको भी हमें खोना नहीं खोना नहीं है जब हम चैंटिंग को अपने खुद की मन में उतारने की कोशिश करते हैं उसको अपने खुद के जो स्पेसिफिक हमें मुश्किलें आती हैं उसको पार करने के लिए थोड़ी सी पोइटिक लाइसेंस जब हम लेते हैं हम जो उसके मूल मतलब है उनको ना छोड़ देना भूल जाए तो संक्षिप्त में ये भजन के लिए चैटिंग पे कमेंट्री तो आप में से अगर कुछ लोग कुछ पूछना चाहें भजन में आई इन्वाइट क्वेश्चन मे बी इन हिंदी विच आई माई ट्रांसलेट टू यू इन इंग्लिश इज वेल सो अगर अगर कुछ सवाल हो तो पूछ सकते हैं और फिर हम क्लोज करना चाहेंगे आठ बज के दस मिनट हो Practice in 
Goitaj is Vipassana thing. And with the forest, uh, the path, the geoforce, is there any difference in the eightfold path? Thank you. First, I have to apologize. I am not so familiar with the particular explanations of Gwenkaji about the uh, about the Eightfold Path. Uh, but um, I believe basically that the Eightfold Path is the same wherever you go. <laughs> and and I know, like from listening to tapes from a while ago that uh, the very experienced approach on, on, uh, on the Pali sources that Gwenkaji had is basically represented in, the, he, he, uh, in his teachings. So I wouldn't be afraid of there being major differences because the Noble Eightfold Path, you know, is actually the, a, a very precise summary of the Buddha's teachings that he gave by himself, basically, and uh, very profound, and the eight aspects are clearly defined, and I would be very surprised if there was any, any difference in the way the, um, the meaning uh, is, is conveyed, particularly the Eightfold Paths, Four Noble Truths, and the three characteristics, I believe, are very, very precisely um, in the teachings of all the Theravada teachers. Whereas like the way, what you do with them, how to approach them, that may, may be a bit different in the, in the emphasis. But I believe in the core teachings, you can trust that this, this won't be far from each other. So I, I must confess, I, I, cannot, I cannot precisely Answer this because I, I haven't dedicated much much study to uh, to Goenkaji's teachings, but um, I believe it cannot be that the Noble Eightfold Path is seen differently because it's one of the core teachings that the Buddha was very precise like about by himself. What you do with it and how you walk it and uh, how aspects of the past manifest and how they come together. That may be from school to school and group to group may be different. But the core teachings, for example, when we use the recitation of the sutta where the Eightfold Path is, um, is given in Pali and in Hindi or in English translation, I would believe that Goenkaji would be happy to chant along. <laughs> <laughs> I actually remember him chanting the Mahasatipatthana Sutta. So, that, like in terms of the fundamentals, basically, I believe we're all in the same boat. But in terms of like how to apply it, he has got certain tricks, and uh, forest traditions got other tricks. <laughs> and uh, and we throw them together, it makes a very 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 good mixture. So, don't worry about it. That would be my gut-like feeling. And the, the other question, can you say, prompt me again? Um, the first question was... The effect, the effect of the age on body and mind of practicing... Of, of age, yes. yes. And that, okay. Just if I can... Sorry, no problem. Question. If you have like the permission, can I just ask a follow up on what you just uh, Yes. I, I clearly For, understood. Yeah. This path is the same. The meaning is the same. But what I was asking was is the practice anything very different actually? Oh, the practice. Correct. Yeah. Like practice in terms of the way you approach your meditation session. There's, there's a different, there's a different um, say, approach in, in many, many groups. and. I would say from what I have um, experienced from, from people asking about like uh, our, our own tradition, like uh, forest tradition, we're very broad and we're not very technical, we're not very systematical. We're not like, a, like in, the, in the, say, kind of, uh, if this, then that, and um, 
continue after stage this and that to to the next stage. So we're more say um, practicing with um, the I would say the the whole teachings um, in in a more say um, say round interchangeable way. So the forest tradition is very technical about how we approach meditation. It's more intuitive. So descriptions sometimes that I hear from meditators that have gone through the um, various groups um, and, and courses in Guenka tradition is like uh, the very um, precise about at what time in the practice would they uh, apply which method. And let's put it like this, the uh, forest tradition is as methodical. And um, yet when, when you first phrase the question as like, the, um, the, is the Noble Eightfold Path different? I believe no, we're doing the same thing, we're just trying to get an angle in from a different, say, say background. And uh, for example, what I believe are the benefits of like meditation retreats is that you get a precise effort of like in a short time being able to extract essential experiences from the whole mass of experience that every human being has and into a very very kind of compact way of experiencing them and seeing what is happening and then applying it directly to the mind and this is the benefit of a course structure and I believe Gwengaji emphasized very much putting the teachings and the practice into a course like structure where you have like a, a retreats, you have like 10 day retreats I believe, you have like maybe even a month retreat, maybe a year retreat, the Tibetans have three years and um, in Ajahn Shah basically he doesn't, doesn't have that approach saying retreat, he feels that it's, it's like um, naturally they, that there are times when one uh, say goes, goes like into seclusion or like um, so associates less with external activities and we have a structure every day and we have um, obviously also a timer for our meditation set settings and uh, sessions but um, there's no sense of like um, doing this um, in that way of a, of a course where you have like first stage, second stage or uh, a sense of after having passed initial stages you'll be qualified to do a second second um, approach and further um, say build up on, on, on the initial stages and so forth so it's in the, I would say in the forest traditions for well, all or nothing <laughs> like people that don't don't get it basically they're not meditating they're just kind of maybe uh, wasting their time with other things <laughs> and the ones that are meditating they're supposed to meditate all the time <laughs> so, which is of course not so easy and uh, we're, we're not being, uh, I'd say, deluded about that this is possible for everybody but the approach is you use all kinds of methods and um, use that kind of mindfulness and wisdom in, a, in an implied way and taking everything as a teaching so it's one of the titles of one of the Dhamma talks of Ajahn Chai everything is teaching us and, um, and you can add all the time and so we can also say it's more like um, using that quality of mindfulness and wisdom in a creative way. So that may be the difference to a structured approach. And I believe Gwengaji has done a lot of work on putting up a very, very thorough structure for giving, giving retreats. And, um, and the foundations that you mentioned, I'm sure, are the same. But how to apply it and how to say keep being inspired by what you're doing is like then still up to you like, nobody can can do this in a meditation retreat for you you have to feel this and have to expand your your experience so that after the retreat you're able to continue with the practice for example in in the forest tradition even though we don't have that sense of like a structured retreat or 10 day or one week or two day two weeks retreats as we're in it more or less for, for life so to say or for daily life or, or for everything in life we still have like um, periods where we do certain practice for example 
the rainy season is a classic period where the monks don't travel, which we have just broken, actually. We haven't broken it, broken it by the letter, but we've broken it a bit by the spirit, flying all the way to Delhi, while we're actually in our rains retreat. is a very exceptional thing to do, but it's still in the parameters, so never mind. <laughs> but like we have this like period, like during the year there's a structure, for example, the seasons or the rainy seasons where we are confined to our place, for example, and do not do much traveling or going out. And then uh, we have like a weekly structure, for example, we have a fortnightly structure, we have a daily structure as well. And particularly in terms of the rains retreat, which we call rains retreat, the, the Ashan Shah gave a few talks where he said, um, entering the rains retreat and exiting the rains retreat is not possible because you cannot enter the practice or exit the practice. You have to practice continually. So that's one of his emphasis. Don't, don't say the retreat is over, meditation is over. And I believe in a more structured um, approach to meditation that it, you have to do an extra effort to bridge the rest of your life or the rest of the Noble Eightfold Path with the factors that you've been just training in a specific way. So no in and out of retreat in, the, in, our, in our ultimate sense in the forest tradition. Practically, we also have structures that we use, and, but, but I would say they're much less, uh, let's say, put in a progression because we're basically experiencing, that we many times are thrown back to the beginning in the way we react in daily life, like to the challenges, dukkha coming up um, as a challenge can still happen after you've done a very thorough, well-structured retreat and a very, I would say, well-together meditation session. You can still feel dukkha. And if you're not careful about how to bridge that experience with what is happening outside of it, eventually to come to that sense of there is no inside and outside of the practice. It all comes together. This is actually what I believe is what happens when you practice the whole of the Eightfold Path, then uh, I'm not sure how con uh, familiar this word is generally in the Theravada Buddhist teachings, but um, in Ajahn Chah's image um, or in, in his language, in the language in the forest tradition, they call it Maka Samaki. It means that a harmony, a unity of the path that comes is actually as a, one of the highest fruits of the practice is that the Noble Eightfold Path is present in all its aspects. And this is of, of course what every Theravada Buddhist aims at and is trying to realize that unity of the teachings, unity of the Dharma manifesting. And of course we approach it to singling out certain aspects bit by bit and sometimes we may get say, kind of like um, blocked by that because we're too focused on just a single thing and actually we need the whole thing. But on the other hand, if you have that everything is practice approach, you might also water down the practice to a level of saying, yeah, I can go um, and, um, and go, go enjoy life and sex and drugs and rock and roll, roll and things like that, basically. Um, I'm, all, I'm only practicing. We might be fooling ourselves as well. So got to be quite careful on both sides, both ends of the spectrum. I let um, Mahapanyuji translate first because then I'll come back to the old age question. Okay, um, so this, like uh, Mahapanyu mentioned, it's, it's getting a little bit late and maybe we can skip the translation. And I just briefly answer about the old age question. But generally, I think every part of life is a special part and teaches us something. Like you can also ask, like, um, how much does the teenage phase of life teach people? Probably, <laughs> when done, when looked at it in hindsight, it may teach a lot actually. <laughs> and uh, an old age, or um, say the um, the Feeling, feeling that the body is going, going down and is starting to ache and the faculties aren't as fresh as 
they were before, I think they can be a very, very good source of wisdom. And it's direct contact with like the Four Noble Truths. As, as you may know, we, we, when we chant, we chant Jati Pidukha, Chara Pidukha, Marana Pidukha. Yeah, like um, birth is Dukkha, old age is Dukkha, sickness and death is Dukkha. So it's directly in the explanations. This is Dukkha, this is to be contemplated, this is to be realized, this is to be, let's say, processed. If, you, if one feels like the body doesn't do what, it wants, want, what we want it to do anymore, great teaching. And um, it does, but it doesn't only happen when you're over 60 or 70 or whenever you define old age. It actually happens continually. Even a teenager could experience it, but they basically are being carried away by, by the superficiality of sensual experience. Whereas like, um, when the sense spheres are weakening and uh, say, for example, you can't read anymore, you can't, can't uh, hear anymore, you basically you need to see Dukkha at that moment. And the, um, seeing the Dukkha and seeing how, how it arises and what is actually the point that causes the, the Dukkha, this is a, realiza a, real, a realization that is really liberating, that brings us to the um, freedom from Dukkha. So, Say, for example, when there's a very difficult situation with health, it may actually bring us a very big um, quantum leap in our practice to realize this is happening, this is the body, this is life, this is Dukkha. And we might be able to just, on, with that trigger, say thank you for this experience because it has been opening my eyes to Dukkha. And I've been able to find ways that the dukkha isn't overpowering me in whatever way is possible in, in your specific situation. So generally, old age is great, just like yours is great, because we, if we use mindfulness and wisdom, we, we can make sense of it and, and, um, and liberate ourselves from being slaves to those external factors. Maybe short. And let's close it. I would still like to um, chant of the Metta Sutta as a as a conclusion in in Pali. This is more more difficult to chant, but let's let's try as a, a well wishing um, to all the all the people that we know and people that we have met and people uh, that are far away or close. Um, people that know the Buddha's teachings or don't know the Buddha's teachings, not even only people, also animals and uh, beings in other realms, below ourselves, above ourselves, we all wish them lo loving kindness, peace, happiness and safety. So I think it's very important that we uh, close an evening by um, spreading loving kindness, spreading it down. Chant, chant along <coughs> if you are able to memorize it already. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama samputasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama samputasa Namo dasa
Together we shall pay respects to the Venerable Sangha. Bow. 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 Thank you. I have just uh, one or two small uh, announcements I need to make. Uh, when we started the evening, our neighbors in the neighboring room, they hadn't started their party. So they started their party and they've locked the door and it's raining outside. So we're going to request 